Mon Dieu, que ça fait du bien de vous voir! Merci, Brenda. Merci pour ton leadership. Merci pour tout ton travail. Mais merci à vous tous d'être ici. Quelle belle gang ce soir. Le party des fêtes avec vous, là, c'est une de mes traditions préférées. Je suis très heureux d'être tous ensemble ce soir. What a great pleasure it is here to be here. And it's getting colder these days, so how about kicking it off with a huge warm round of applause for the work of every MP, staffer, and volunteer in this room tonight. And, and while we're on applause, how about a massive round of applause for someone who gave her farewell speech in the House tonight, Carolyn Bennett. Where is Carolyn? Can her table please put up her hands? Here we go. There you are. Okay. There they are, right over there. Carolyn, like I said in the House today, um, I have benefited from your advice, your leadership, your support, and your friendship for the 15 years since I first got elected. Uh, and I have to say something that we would all want to be able to say or have said of ourselves after we leave this place. Canada is a so much better place place because you served for 26 years in the House of Commons. Merci, ma chère amie. We'd be here all night if I listed everything she's done. But my friends, it's because of all your work that we can continue to deliver for Canadians. Your work is more important than ever in this period where we're all experiencing a lot of change, change in interest rates, change in the world order, change in the environment, change in the way we work, change in culture. All this change can be disorienting, but this is why the choices we make right now are so consequential. Because the world is going through change. And we need to make sure that this change benefits Canadians. Because in this pivotal moment, all politicians have to ask themselves, are we going to tackle the problems people are facing? Or are we going to exploit them? Are we going to solve the problems, making Canadians more anxious? Or make people more anxious for our own advantage. Well, we, as Liberals, with hope and hard work, we need to take the challenges of change and make them opportunities for everyone. You know, Quand on a formé le gouvernement en 2015, après dix ans d'un gouvernement Harper Polièvre, sans vision, on s'est mis au travail et on a tourné les défis en opportunités. On s'est attaqué au changement climatique. Et quand les compagnies à l'international ont vu qu'on était sérieux, quand ils ont compris qu'au Canada, avec nos ressources, notre hydroélectricité et surtout avec nos excellents travailleurs ambitieux, on peut produire les batteries les plus propres au monde, ben, ils se sont mis à investir chez nous. On a pris un défi comme les changements climatiques et on l'a tourné en opportunité économique. When we saw that moms had to choose between their kids and their careers because families didn't have access to affordable childcare, especially during the pandemic, and after 50 years of previous governments saying it just could never be done, 
our government created a Canada-wide $10 a day child care system. And because of this work, women's participation in the workforce is now at a record high. And remember, the economy is not numbers, it's people. People like Susanna in Mississauga, saving hundreds of dollars a month on childcare, which gave her the freedom to choose to go back to work. You have all heard thousands upon thousands of stories just like this across the country, because childcare is not just social policy, it's economic policy. Et donc, avant d'aller plus loin, je veux prendre un moment pour reconnaître le travail de Karina Gould avant qu'elle nous quitte pour son congé de maternité. Where are you, Karina? There she is. Karina, you helped negotiate $10 a day child care agreements with the provinces. You are the youngest woman ever to serve as cabinet minister and the first minister ever to give birth while holding office. And while we're applauding, in a few weeks, you'll also become the second minister ever to give birth while in office. But you know, you know how important this work is for young families. Your husband Alberto, your son Oliver, and your imminent daughter are all lucky to have you. And we're lucky to have you as a team and as a country. So let's give Karina and the whole team who works with her so hard every day in the House Leader's office a huge round of applause. Enjoy the maternity leave. We'll miss you, but can't wait to see you back. Et pendant que nous, on s'occupe à tourner les défis en opportunités, Pierre Polièvre, lui, exploite les défis pour essayer de les tourner en opportunités pour lui-même. See, people ask me, why do I want to run in the next election? It's because I'm fighting for the middle class. I'm fighting for reconciliation. I'm fighting for climate change. I'm fighting to build an economy that works for all Canadians. I'm running because now is not the time to stop fighting for progress. But, but the more interesting question to me is, why does Pierre Polyev want this job? To import far-right populist politics to Canada? To call people's homes shacks and use homeless people as props? to ramp up bullying on 2SLGBTQI plus kids as a wedge for politics? To cut the programs Canadians rely on, like dental care and child care? To be honest, I don't think he knows the answer to that question, and that's what makes him so reckless. Le monde traverse une période difficile maintenant, avec des imprévus comme la pandémie, les conflits, l'inflation mondiale. C'est comme si on avait frappé de la glace noire. 
Puis la solution de Pierre Polièvre, c'est quoi? C'est d'essayer de nous vendre un char sans pneus d'hiver. On a besoin de rester solide sur nos valeurs pour passer à travers ces moments de conséquences. And you know, if you want to be prime minister, you have to be able to answer tough questions. Families are worried about the cost of housing, and he sends a link to a 15-minute video riddled with inaccuracies. Canadians are worried about the rise of hatred and polarization, and he chomps on an apple. There's an accident near our border, and because he gets his news from Fox, he calls it terrorism. Polyev calls his approach common sense. It's absolute nonsense. The latest example is that these MAGA conservatives voted against military aid for the people of Ukraine and against the free trade deal President Zelensky is asking us for. En ce moment même, la Russie continue son invasion injustifiable de l'Ukraine. Quand le président Zelensky nous a visités en septembre et quand il nous a parlé aux leaders du G7 la semaine dernière, il nous a demandé notre aide pour soutenir son combat courageux. When I visited Kyiv in June, I saw Ukrainians waving Canadian flags because they know our values and they know that we walk the walk and we stand with them. But now, the Conservative Party of Canada is throwing Ukraine under the Russian bus to score cheap political points with their MAGA base. In fact, just today, Pierre Polyev referred to Ukraine as a faraway foreign land. Well, more than a hundred years of Ukrainian Canadians building this country from the prairies to our cities would disagree. The Conservative Party might turn its back on Ukraine, but we'll be there with whatever it takes for as long as it takes. Évidemment, il n'y a pas juste l'Europe qui est aux prises avec un conflit déchirant. What's happening in the Middle East is reverberating around the world, across Canada, and within our Liberal Party. I've spoken with many of you personally, and I know how extremely difficult it has been. Some of you are directly impacted, or have loved ones who are. It's been tough. And we're having hard but necessary conversations together. One of the reasons we're having these conversations within our party is because we are the most diverse political party in this country. And that's a good thing. If we can't have those difficult conversations amongst ourselves, how can we expect Canadians to have them? Au Canada, on réussit la diversité mieux que partout ailleurs. Nommez-moi un seul pays à travers le monde où les gens sont aussi libres de prier, d'aimer et de s'exprimer dans toute leur diversité. Mais on n'est pas arrivé là par accident. On ne va pas continuer sans effort. And while we're all having those conversations among ourselves. Let's remember that Canada is the only country in the world to have both a special envoy on combating anti-Semitism and a special representative on combating Islamophobia.
Deborah's work and Amira's work go hand in hand. Inclusion takes effort. And we need to keep working at it even when it's hard, especially when it's hard. Canada is a place where we celebrate our diversity. On est un pays de voisins, de collègues, d'amis, de familles qui vivent cette diversité à chaque jour. Canada is a place where an Inuk born in Nunavik is now Governor General. C'est un pays dans lequel on peut répondre aux questions au Parlement dans les deux langues officielles, comme Pascal Saint-Onge l'a si bien rappelé aux conservateurs. Canada is a place where both Muslim and Jewish communities prepared food for people who had been evacuated during wildfires this summer. These are all Canadian stories, and now more than ever, let's remember who we are. My friends, let's keep fighting for progress. This is how we turn challenges into opportunities. Continuons de nous battre pour protéger nos terres et nos océans. Continuons de nous battre pour l'égalité homme-femme. Continuons de nous battre pour s'assurer que les armes d'assaut restent illégales. Continuons de nous battre pour devenir un leader de l'économie carboneutre de demain. And the world, the world wants to be part of what Canada is doing. This year, Canada ranked third for foreign direct investments of all the countries in the world. The world is paying attention. And for next year, both the IMF and the OECD project that Canada will have the strongest growth in the G7. So let's keep fighting for the middle class and for a clean economy that works for everyone. There is now clean drinking water in 96% of First Nations communities, but let's keep fighting until we reach 100%. Let's keep fighting for a childcare system that is saving moms and dads hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars a month. Let's keep fighting to lift even more kids out of poverty. Let's keep fighting for a plan that will fast track the construction of hundreds of thousands of additional homes across the country. Let's keep fighting to protect the freedom of people to love whom they love. And let's keep fighting to make sure that every future government of Canada is pro-choice, because women's rights are non-negotiable. My friends, take it from me. The more we fight, the more hits we take. No one comes out of a fight unbruised, not even the winners. Fighting is hard work, but it matters so much. That stunt, that useless, time-wasting, 30-hour stunt in Parliament last week proves once again that the Conservatives are just not in it for Canadians, they're in it for themselves. They actually voted to cut funding to build 
thousands of new homes. They voted against the funding for the Holocaust Museum in Montreal. They voted to cut funding for cybersecurity, for helping people with addictions, for supporting farmers. That 30-hour temper tantrum accomplished nothing. But were we surprised? No, because we're used to them doing nothing. Nothing for the middle class, nothing for families, nothing for Canadians. Mais vous, mes amis, au contraire, merci de toujours vous tenir debout pour défendre nos valeurs. C'est quand on travaille en équipe que tout est possible. Depuis les dernières élections, avec l'aide de nos bénévoles à travers le pays, on a élu trois nouveaux députés libéraux avec plus de la moitié des votes. Il y a eu 4000 personnes qui ont participé à notre dernier congrès libéral, presque le double du congrès des conservateurs, et pour la moitié de nos participants, c'était leur tout premier congrès. On vient de réussir le meilleur mois de novembre de l'histoire du Parti libéral en termes de levée de fonds. We just achieved the best ever November for grassroots fundraising in the history of the Liberal Party of Canada. Et avec Soraya et Terry comme co-président de la campagne nationale, on est entre bonnes mains pour les prochaines élections, mais on a encore beaucoup de travail à faire. Continuons de faire des appels, de cogner aux portes, de partager notre message sur les réseaux sociaux. Our liberal movement needs you. Canada needs you. So keep listening to Canadians. Keep talking about our positive vision for the future. Continuez de parler de la classe moyenne et de tous ceux qui travaillent fort pour en faire partie. Continuez de parler de démocratie, de liberté, de justice. Keep talking about how we're not only meeting our climate targets, but we're on track to exceed our goals. Keep talking about growing the strong economy from the middle out and the bottom up, like what we're doing in St. Thomas, Bridgewater, Fort Saskatchewan, Maple Ridge, and right across the country. Let's keep reminding people that even though we have a lot of work to do, Canada is not broken. When times got tough throughout our history, when we've faced storms, we've never given up. We've rolled up our sleeves, redoubled our efforts, and turned challenges into opportunities. My friends, another year is ending, but the fight for progress continues. Canada is the very best country in the world. Let's keep working to make it even better. Merci, mes amis. Thank you so much. Joyeux fête! Happy holidays! Cool.